Sure. So look, 5G as a technology itself has various attributes that make it uh, really special. Uh, I mean, the attributes are, of course, uh, uh, high capacity, um, 100 fold capacity, ultra low latency, high density. And as well, I think the 5G technology inherently is, is, is much cheaper, you know, uh, to deploy and um, but but the, the real business case, in my opinion, is in creating a 5G architecture which brings in tremendous amount of efficiency into the network architecture. I mean, as you know, mobile networks got built in layers, you know, 2G, 2.5G, then 3G, then 4G, then 4.5G, and now everybody's rolling out 5G. So, so if you go into these networks, uh, you will see that it's a really complex mesh of routers and uh, transponders and optical gears thing on top of each other. And and that makes it one complex second it's an energy guzzler and third it's a huge footprint uh, so i believe 5g is a beautiful excuse for all the service providers to get their architectures right make them flat make them uh, intelligent ensure that there's a segment routing running on these networks uh, ensure they're open ensure there's a zero touch provisioning uh, and I think that means really uh, that with 5G, you are, introdu you are introducing simplicity in these networks. You are increasing the security postures into these networks. You are making them extremely efficient. You know, uh, Cisco offers technologies, you know, which can help you converge IP and optical, which were two different worlds, you know, where you were as a telco putting capex on both sides. I think we have a pathway where we put the two together and make it flat and low cost and intelligent. So so hence, you know, apart from all the attributes of 5G, you know, which really gives possibilities to offer new sorts of services, uh, quite a few for enterprise verticals because clearly 5G becomes a vehicle to, to digitize various verticals. Um, and that's where the business cases, the business use cases for industrial IoT. I mean, look at manufacturing and how you can make that smart and draw efficiency in that. Uh, look at logistics, look at um, smart cities, look at uh, health, look at entertainment, education. All of that is something that we have started to experience. You know, I mean, COVID really fast tracked that journey, but with 5G, your experience will become richer and immersive. But the real business case sets in, sits in the savings, because as I said, when you bring in this 5G architecture into the mix, you're really setting up a telco network that's a true digital value uh, uh, player, meaning with this network, you have an ability to go off a digital value plays to all sorts of vertical enterprises. and. Uh, and as a result, transform them digitally and make them efficient digitally. And, and there's a lot of value creation that will happen in the process. And obviously, the whole ecosystem will benefit from them. And, and that's why the true uh, monetization for 5G investments lie. These are three questions in one question. Let me unravel them one by one. I mean, Wi-Fi 6 is an evolution of Wi-Fi 5, which I think all of us today are using in our homes, in our offices. So Wi-Fi 6 brings exactly the same attributes that 5G brings into the mobile technology. Uh, so with Wi-Fi 6, you get much higher capacities. You get low, la low latency, I think it's 75% more efficient in terms of a low latency. Uh, it, it is very dense technology and in reality, I believe 5G and Wi-Fi 6 will, will uh, coexist. They will be like uh, husband and wife in the family, right? Because what, what Wi-Fi does, 5G will not do and what 5G can do, Wi-Fi does not. 
So for example, let me um, lay out a day of a life. You know, you get up in the morning, you're in your home, you're enjoying uh, everything that you do, you experience in the morning, whether you are watching news or, 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 a, or a movie on a 4K or 8K, whatever. So your Wi-Fi becomes your technology that will help you with that. And the moment you now put a foot outside your home, you want to go to for a run, uh, you will have a mobile with you and mobile will continue to give you that that experience and the service. You basically can take your conversation that you had on Wi-Fi with you and you can continue. And then you reach your office, you again back seamlessly move back from 5G into Wi-Fi 6. And let's say midday you want to go to a mall and you want to do whatever you have to do there. Again, in a mall, since it's a lot of different retail businesses in that mall, 5G is a better technology to use because you will not have a frequency interference. So, so that that is really how the two technologies will work together. More importantly, you know, as we moved from 3G to 4G to 5G, in 3G we use Wi-Fi to offload, uh, offload 5G traffic onto the Wi-Fi. That was 30% world average. And then if you move to 5G, uh, it is 71% you offload to Wi-Fi 6. So Wi-Fi in a way makes 5G efficient and it makes the economics work for the future of Internet. I think uh, now coming to future of Internet, yes, future of Internet is about making Internet access affordable. I think we are in a really highly connected society today, but still two and a half billion people in the world cannot afford decent broadband. So future of Internet is about bringing in technologies in a shape or form, putting them in an architecture so we can make um, it cheaper, we can make it efficient, we can make it immersive. So. And how are we doing that? I mean, from Cisco perspective, we believe it is about bringing in technologies, you know, which is chipsets uh, with the right attributes, you know, which brings in amazing amount of efficiencies in in terms of producing those gigabytes that we'll consume as we move into the pivot into this new world of, of digital world where everything that is uh, benefiting from a connection is getting connected. So second thing what we do is we bring in um, convergence of IP and optical. And I mentioned that there's a number of boxes lying in your architecture sitting on top of each other, trying to make this data work. I think in this new world, we will bring in technologies that will make it flat and intelligent. Uh, and, and then the last piece is about bringing in uh, the data center architecture, you know, which is I think you heard about technologies like mobile edge compute, edge services. Uh, so it is about creating a data center fabric, you know, that ensures that when a data gets produced, the data is captured and monetized right away because data is perishable. You know, like in old days, all the data that got produced was brought back to the central repository. Then we will analyze it. It will give us insights. In a connected world, that's too late because because if there is a 10 second, uh, 10 millisecond uh, delay in capturing the data, you've already started losing value. And more you delay, lesser the value of that data becomes. And all the monetization I talked about lies in how quickly you're monetizing the data. And that's why you need this edge capability, you need a distributed data center architecture. So, so these different pieces put together truly create future of Internet. Future of Internet that's affordable, that gives you uh, ability uh, to create data which is secure, which is seamless and which is immersive. Well, I mean, it's just my second time in a row. I was there last year. I mean, obviously, I think it, these are these these discussions are very, very rich and broad. You know, uh, 
if you look the kind of people that were in this uh, discussion that I personally participated, I think you had your representatives from regulators, you had uh, large telcos, you had uh, you had um, uh, you know companies like Bosch, you had terminal companies. It was a complete wide separate of the entire ecosystem, you know. Uh, so, so, so I think it's it's very important that we, irrespective of what you uh, contribute to this entire ecosystem, you get a full picture of what's happening in the industry, and uh, and that gives you a little bit food for thought. That gives you, I mean, we we are a technology company. I think it gives us perspectives on, you know, what is going to be important, what is, uh, where we put our R and D dollars, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I, I believe it's very very important and. And these uh, discussions really, you know, set a vision and really guide us how do we shape this industry.